Oh, that's good. It's just the type of wine I wanna drink. I am super excited about this. 2019, 15 bucks for a wine from my palate, 93 points. I'm Matthew Horky. For the last seven years, I've traveled around the world tasting thousands of wines annually in search of the most unique, exciting, and expensive bottles on the planet. Cabernet Sauvignon is often referred to as the king of red grape varieties. However, with the movement towards fresher, more medium-bodied, more elegant wines, Cabernet Franc is moving more and more into the spotlight. And before we blind taste a bunch of Cabernet Francs from all over the world, I thought it'd be cool to get another expert's opinion on this great red grape variety. We're going to talk to Allison, who works for a wine importer in Canada and runs an Instagram account called Cab Franc Chronicles. Cool name, right? Let's give her a call. What makes Cabernet Franc such a special grape? There's a lot of things that make Cabernet Franc a special grape. It's uh, versatility, number one. It makes red wines, rosés, sparkling, ice wine in Canada. It's one of the most ancient grape varieties in the world as well, as far as uh, Jancis Robinson refers to it as a founder variety. It is responsible for the parentage of several other grape varieties that we wouldn't have today if it wasn't for Cabernet Franc. So Cap Sauve, Merlot, Carmenere. Uh, there's a couple of varieties out of Basque Country in Spain that are also uh, mm -hmm offspring of Cabernet Franc. So it's planted everywhere. Where there are Bordeaux style blends, Cabernet Franc is going to be there, but it's often playing second fiddle to Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. Um, so the focus for me has always been Cabernet Franc as the star. Not just a blendy grape. It can stand on its own, right? It's exactly. Not just a... It's got it's got all the florals that make it intriguing and kind of sexy. It has those earthy herbal undertones that are inherent in its DNA, the, that greenish herbaceous edge, which I think adds this wonderful savory complexity. It's got great acidity. It's got enough tannin and acid for aging purposes. Those tannins aren't harsh. They're not too astringent like Cabernet Sauvignon. Why do you love Cabernet Franc? It's been my first love. It was the wine that I started focusing on when I was in the wine business 10, no, 15 years ago now. It was the wine that I always talked about. I, I did exports for a winery in Canada for a long time. And that was the wine that I fell in love with right from the beginning of my career. When I started to discover more examples from the Loire, from Hungary, from all these other places, I just, it was a rabbit hole situation. I love the accessibility of it. I, I also love the price point. Cabernet Franc always was really affordable. So it was also very accessible in terms of, you know, what I could afford to drink. A lot of people on the channel laugh at my pronunciations, especially my French pronunciations. <laughs> so give me the proper oh. Cabernet Franc pronunciation in the French. Well, if you're, yes, if you're French, it's Cabernet Franc without the C. Allison does a lot of great things on her account, Cab Franc Chronicles. I'll put a link in the description below. You might want to check her out. A lot of fun videos. She even does a weekly Cab Franc quiz, which is super geeky, super tough. I've never gotten 100% right on the quiz. I just want to expand on a few things that she said. Yes, while Cabernet Franc is commonly thought of as the third grape in Bordeaux as an ancient Bordeaux variety, its origins might be in the Basque Country, which is in the southwest of France, also in the northeast east corner of Spain. The area settles the two countries. Eventually the grape variety made it from the Basque country up to Bordeaux and then eventually to Loire. Cabernet Franc is actually one of the parents of Cabernet Sauvignon. In general it's known as the third grape of Bordeaux especially on the left bank. On the right bank for instance some of the most famous wines in the world like Chateau Figeac, Chateau Cheval Blanc, 50% Merlot, 50% Cabernet Franc. In the Loire it becomes the star where it makes a lot of varietal wines which we have six here today which I'm excited to taste. On paper, generally the wines are a little more fruitier, a little bit more forward, a little bit less tannic, lighter in alcohol than those made from Cabernet Sauvignon. However, that's in theory. When you get it from warmer areas like Napa, Tuscany, those wines can be pretty ripe and I think it's sometimes difficult to tell the difference between Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc when you're doing a blind tasting. Cabernet Franc has these red cherry flavors, which I absolutely love. They can be herbaceous, really smell like green pepper, capsicum, sometimes a too underripe, sometimes can be a little bit too vegetal for a lot of people. They can have graphite notes, which I absolutely love, tobacco as well. And while there's some really expensive ones out there, they can be super affordable. I think all six examples I have from the Loire here are around or under 20 bucks. I have examples from Washington State, California, Italy, Argentina, and Hungary. Besides France, besides the Loire, Hungary has really taken on the variety as its own. A lot of times I just call it Franc. 
in the south of Hungary, there's a region called Villan, and there the highest examples are known as Villany Franc. I'm looking forward to seeing what this blind tasting holds. I think this is the biggest red wine blind tasting on the channel. Let's get these blinded and let's get tasting. It is difficult to put together these blind tasting videos, especially ones this big. All the wines can barely fit on the desk. We're gonna taste out of my Ravsia glasses. These are actually burgundy glasses, and they're the best inexpensive glasses that I've ever used. I like them so much that I bought a second set. I'll put the link below if you wanna check them out. It really helps out the channel if you like them, so I appreciate it. I know that they're burgundy glasses, but I found them to be great with red wines, Bordeaux blends, and Cabernet Franc has some nice, nice leafy and perfume notes, so I think they should work well. Let's see. Got these babies Corvin, got them mixed up. Let's taste them. Wine one smells like a riper Cabernet Franc. Like I said, I have six uh, Loire ones here from six different appellations in the Loire. I don't even remember what appellations are in there. The Valley de Loire sent me a six pack of wines. Thank you so much. This I don't think would be a Loire one. It's a little riper. Maybe Chino, no. Now it's starting to smell Frenchy. Red cherry, a little bit of leather type flavors, tobacco, graphite. Has some licorice notes. Tannins are there. It's that's a super good wine. Maybe that could be a riper French one. Who knows here? That's why this is that's why it's gonna be hard. Okay, wine number two. Oh, wine two is definitely riper. If this is Loire, I'd be super shocked. More black cherry, like a lot of licorice, like red and black licorice. Still has a little bit of the capsicum notes. Cab Franc, so nice. Bigger fruit. These tannins, Cabernet Franc tannins, they are a little bit astringent, a little bit drying, but they don't suck the saliva off your mouth. They just kind of grip a little bit. I think these are good choices on the glasses for Cabernet Franc, to be honest. Another ripe version. Oh gosh, I don't even know how many ripe versions I have here. This has a mocha component, a little bit of sweet tobacco. Still has the red cherry. Wow. In terms of quality, all three are, the three are like really, really quite similar. Wine four is a little bit dusty. It reminds me of when I, when I, my grandmother was alive, my late grandmother, I love her to death, go into her basement for lunch and have this kind of dusty basement style. Not moldy, but a little bit dusty. A little bit of spice. Wow, this is starting to get super complex in the glass. Red cherry. The length on that's really good. I feel like I prefer some of the vegetal notes in, in Cabernet Franc from Loire, but remember number four when we reveal it, because I think this is a ripe style done really well. The finish is very good. It's got this graphite note on the back end. I'm thinking number four might be an American one, but it was really good, whatever it is. Wine five is a lot of wood. A lot of oak, ripe, black, cherry type notes. Five is an ambitious wine. It's ripe, there's a lot of mocha, black cherry, but on the palate, it doesn't taste all like oak, just up front in the nose. Tannins are smooth. You can tell it's a good wine because it's a long wine. Is it my favorite in the bunch? No, but so far is it one along with number four that might age the best? Probably. I think in general, it's a high quality wine. It's not one that I want to drink right now at the moment, but I think it's very good. Six. I love it. It's got a little bit of manure. Not, not super stinky. Earth, soil. This has got to be from Loire. Leather. Like the most expensive and probably the most searched for Cabernet Franc in the world is Le Clos Rigeau. It's from Samour Champagne. That's an appellation in the Loire. To me, that's the greatest Cabernet Franc that I've ever tasted in my life. What a magnificent wine. This is not to that level, but it kind of reminds me of that same stuff. It's medium bodied. Then I'm going to go for it. So this is super, super earthy on the palate. If it had just a tad more fruit, I mean, I would push it to humongous levels, but I'm really liking it. You got to like earthy wines though, if you're going to get into something like this. Oh, Cabernet Franc, when it's done well, has this little graphite note on the back end. That's nice. Wine seven, showing me also a little bit of wood, but it blows off. Oh, black olive, sometimes you get with good Cabernet Franc, black cherry. Mm. This is the roundest one. I think just a lot of people are gonna like it, the length there. It's just round and silky. It's a good wine. A little oaky up front, but man, it really starts to come around. I, I think I gotta compare it here to the one that I said is like the basement, the, the spice here. Let's see. 
I've got a couple of bangers like right in a row. I'm surprised here. And I hope they're the $20 Loire ones. So more of you will be drinking Loire Cabernet Franc so we can get importers to bring more of that stuff in. When you're in France, you see some of these Cabernet Francs go for seven, eight euros on the shelf, up to 15. They're phenomenal wines. And then they're just kind of hard to track down unless you know a specialty shop. Wine 8 has like no fruit. It's like rubber, rubber, rubber. Ah, black olive, black cherry starting to come out. Capsicum. Pretty structured. So funny, uh, on the beginning, it did not smell fruity at all, more black olive. On the palate, real rich, dark black cherry fruits. I wouldn't say it's as layered as some of my other favorite wines here, but I gotta give this wine its props for its complexity. That's good here. This is an episode where maybe some of you, if you've had some of those wines, might not agree with me 100%. Cabernet Franc can be very divisive because it can be too vegetal, too green, too earthy for a lot of people, which I like. I remember back in the day, Gary Vaynerchuk loved Loire Cabernet Franc, loved it so much. And one time he said, let's just change the name of the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Loire Valley TV. I'm telling you guys, I can do shows about Loire Valley red wines for the rest of my life. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Loire Valley TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck. <laughs> Nine is graphite, graphite, graphite. Oh. Nine is objectively not going to score high in a lot of competitions. Remember number nine. But for my palate, graphite, cherry juice, this is the type of wine that I really want to drink. It's got some grip, it's got some tannin. I'm going to score high personally for my palate because I love the complexity, but I don't think that a lot of people are going to love it. I mean, whatever nine, is, I think it's a Loire wine. I love it. I actually might want to drink that tonight. I actually thought that maybe some of the Loire might be a little too vegetal, but I've been happy with a lot of them. I mean, I remember the last time I was in the Loire was a couple years ago. I noticed the style, especially Chinon, that's a pretty famous appellation. Those wines can be a little bit bigger. A little riper. Okay, wine 10. Okay, this has leather, black cherry, complexities. I think the Loire wines, oh man. Oh, that's good. It's a little drying, a little bit less fruity in the back end, but me personally, I love it because you're gonna have these wines with food. I'd love to have them with some braised meat. Last time I was in the Loire, we did a Samour Champagne dinner. That's a famous area in the Loire for Cabernet Franc. Those wines are not so expensive besides the Clos Grisil, which I was just talking about. And we actually had a pairing with lamb free stew. Lamb free, you know, those fish that suck on other fish. A lot of people thought it was gross. I thought it was a really interesting pairing. Again here, every time I drink Cabernet Franc, especially from the Loire or Cabernet Franc in general. I'll, you hear this with me, a lot of people say, why don't I buy these wines and drink these wines a lot more? Unbridled complexity, I like that a lot. I honestly think I might get a little bit ambitious, but who cares, I like these wines, whatever. So it's cool about wine, just know your own palate. Wine 11, a lot of wood, but the fruit does come out. That's the thing, you can have wines with a lot of wood and that's all there is, but if the fruit can stand up to it, it can stand up to it. Starts to blow off, you start to get a little caramel, some red cherry. Graphite. So I have to say, it's got some persistence. I thought that was completely a new world wine at first, but I don't know now. When I do these blind tastings, I have to gather samples. I know what the wines are beforehand. But when you have big, huge tastings like this, like 13 wines, when it starts to get over 8, 10, 13, then I just kind of forget what's in here. That's where it's a lot of fun. That's where I learn just as much as you. Let's go on to number 12 here. 12 is also a lot of graphite, a lot of cherry. 12 is really well done got length. 13 smells like my dad owns a big farm. Uh, like ba basically going to the barn, dirt, soil, a little bit of leather, also super complex. 13 is a lot different than the rest. 13 tastes like a minimal intervention, kind of like a natural wine. It's got that raw, almost like that pickled juice type of flavor. Not extreme, not going all the way where a lot of people would dismiss it, but you gotta know what you're getting into. I like those type of wines. Sometimes even I like the real crazy stuff. I personally really like this, but you kinda gotta know what you're getting into on this. Wow, some of these wines are good. With these wines, I like them all. I'm just gonna go purely with first instinct. You ready for the reveal? I'm ready. Let's get to it. A lot of these were quite similar in quality, just difference in taste here. All the wines for me were above 90. I know that for some people, maybe they won't like them as much because again, these are more earthy type flavor numbers. Let's go with wine two and three. Two bigger, riper fruit, the licorice note, really stood out the most for me. Let's take a look here, 90 plus points. 
Wow, <laughs> this is the Pet del Comel Rosa de la Roca Cabernet Franc. This is from Montelo, the Veneto in Northern Italy, just Northwest of Venice, 20 bucks. I think it's very good, bigger, riper fruit, but yeah, it still tasted old world to me. At 20 bucks, I think in Europe, it's even less than that. So kudos to them. Their Cabernet Sauvignon also showed well in another video that I did, so good for them. All right, number three, uh, had wood, had mocha, red cherry, type flavors 90 plus points the mocha here is really what came out at first it was a little bit oaky but you know what it's wow this is a chinon the domain gordon the chinon rouge 2019 20 bucks made from 30 year old cabernet franc vines wow chinon is maybe the most famous cabernet franc appellation in the loire that or similar champagne next up the first wine we tasted riper licorice a lot of leather i thought it was very good 91 points this is an exceptional wine so far we've got a lot of deals here let's see if we have some wow this is the blecol number 41 this is the Cabernet Franc from Walla Walla Valley 2019, Washington State, 39 bucks. I know this is a club member only wine. You have to kind of be on their mailing list to get it. Riper, licorice, leather. I thought maybe that it could be New World. Really, really nice wine. You don't see a ton of varietal Cabernet Francs from Washington State. So there you go. That's one of the historic wineries in Washington State. I love what they do with their Bordeaux blends. Really good value for money, around 40 bucks. Moving on here. We got a couple tied here. Let's go number 11. Had a lot of wood at first, but the graphite, the cherry flavors, and the length, I could not deny the quality. 91 plus points. Uh, thought it was very, very nice wine. Let's take a look here. I'm excited to see if this is uh, if this is Loire and Oki. Wow, it is from the. This is from Samur, not Samur Champagne. Samur. This is the Chateau de la Dorandier Vieux Vin. So it's an old vine, 2019. Eight. 18 bucks for 91 plus point wine. Man, I'm telling you, the Loire guys, Samour is a cool appellation. I think at Samour Champagne, you can only make red Cabernet Franc. Maybe you can make rose. In Samour, you can make red. You can make white, excellent whites out of Chenin Blanc. There's some excellent barrel fermented Chenin Blancs there that are mind blowing. 18 bucks. You're getting to me, which I think is a very nice wine. It's got enough wood, I think, to, to allow a little bit of sweetness to get a lot of people into it, maybe that are casual about wine, got enough complexities, get people like me and you enjoyed in it. Let's move on here. Number eight, uh, also 91 plus, black olive, vegetal. At first I was saying, wow, there's no fruit, but then when I tasted it, oh my gosh, the fruit came on really strong. 91 plus points. Let's see what it is. Wow. This is one from Tuscany, uh, from around the Bulgari era. This is the Tenute Setticelli. This is the Scipio. This is the most expensive in the bunch. 90 bucks. 20 months in French Oak, 20 months in the bottle before release. You see a lot of Cabernet Franc in Bulgari, uh, in Tuscany. I think the Lodovico is maybe the most expensive one at the moment. Very nice wine there. Bordeaux blend, I think, is a little bit better value. I think it's around 60 bucks and it's outstanding. Still very good wine. I would like more fruit on up front on the nose, but on the back end, I couldn't deny it. I thought it was still very good wine, 91 plus points. Okay, I think we have the cheapest and the most expensive wine out. So let's see where we go from here. I got a couple tied for 92 points. Number 13. This is the one where I thought it was minimal intervention, more of like a natural wine. So maybe not everybody's gonna like it. Me personally, I can take some of those extreme styles. You have to know your palate, okay? If you're used to tasting more uh, conventional type wines, sometimes natural wines can be a little bit off-putting to some people. Wow, Domaine de la Bergerie from Anjou, 22 bucks. Anjou is known for making a great rosé out of Cabernet Franc. Sometimes the rosés can be off-dry. Nice to see a dry one wine there and I really like this 12 and a half alcohol that's what's cool about these Loire Cabernet Francs 92 points 22 bucks again this is the hipster wine so not everybody is going to love it okay number 10 a lot of leather black olive complex a little bit drying in the back and if it had a little more fruit I think it could be even even better so not everybody is going to like it but I gave it 92 points I thought it was exceptional again I might be biased because I love Cabernet Franc let's take a look here this is Loire. This is the Javier Weisskopf. That's kind of a friend from Touraine. 
Torrain, also known for good Sauvignon Blanc. This is the Le Rocher de Violette, Cabernet Franc, 2017, 23 bucks. Is this brought in by Skernick? Again, if you know good importers, maybe you just follow their portfolio. Skernick brings in great stuff. Really, really nice wine. Weisskopf, it seems like it's a German guy making wine in the lore. Maybe it is, I don't know. Whatever he's doing, it's really good. 92 points, excellent, excellent wine. Another one tied. Uh, 92 points wood black cherry type flavors this is the one where i said maybe uh, at first it was a little too oaky but then the fruit really kind of melted into it that was number five let's take a look here <laughs> this is the tightest cabernet franc from napa valley 2019 this is a funny thing i don't like to include wines twice in videos but in a video i did this showed so well blind i scored at 95 points i wanted to stick it in again because we're doing a cabernet franc video see if i could pick it out it, it was one of the oakiest 92 points still did very very good a little bit bigger new world and style more modern wine this runs in at 59 bucks so not a cheap wine by any stretch of the imagination wine number 12 graphite cherry length i mean i thought this wine was the graphite notes in good cabernet franc can remind me sometimes of merlot which i like quite a a bit let's take a look what we got here this is also from the loire this is the domaine chancel this is lydia iteri chancel samour champagne 2018 21 bucks for a wine for me 92 plus points man loire cabernet front guys you gotta get in on this. Okay, let's reveal the top four. And before we reveal the top four, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, click on the bell so you know when new videos are coming out, and let me know what you think about Cabernet Franc. If you really wanna help the channel like some of you do, you gotta watch the whole video through. That's what pushes the video through the YouTube algorithm. If you're just eating, drinking wine, just let it play through. Or let it play through multiple times. That's what would help me out a lot. <laughs> wine number six, leather, manure, soil, earth. I, 93 plus points. I think this is a Loire wine. I don't know how many Loire wines we have left. Let's take a look here. 93 points. Argentina! <laughs> this is the Zucardi Polygonos Cabernet Franc from San Pablo. 2020, 30 bucks, 93 points for a new world wine, a South American wine to have that many, you know, old world nuances. I am really impressed. It's the Clos Rougeau. It's from Samour Champagne. To me, that's the greatest Cabernet Franc that I've ever tasted in my life. What a magnificent wine. This is not to that level, but it kind of reminds me of that same stuff. Way to go, Zucar Zucardi family. Argentina's a lot more than Malbec. Excellent, excellent wine. Okay, the top three here. Number nine. This is a disclaimer. I think for my palate, personally, I'm scoring it this high. I don't think for everybody it's going to score this high. It's just the type of wine I want to drink. Lots of graphite, lots of cherry, lots of explosion. Medium-bodied type wine. I am super excited about this. It is from the Loire. The Saint Nicholas de Bourgui. That's the appellation. Cuvée Estelle. Domaine Estelle Rudolf Cognard. 2019. 15 bucks. 15 bucks for a wine for my palate, 93 points. Bourgoy is more of a famous appellation for Cabernet Franc, St. Nicholas de Bourgoy. Not as well known to the casual wine people. That's really impressive. <laughs> Wowzers, okay. <laughs> Number seven. Wow, that is cool. Number seven, Black Olive, Black Cherry. It's just really a smooth wine, really well done. 94 points, outstanding. Wow. This is the Venom Cellars, the Scrapper, Cabernet Franc, 2017, from El Dorado County in California. 39 bucks, almost 14.9% alcohol. Didn't feel it at all. El Dorado County, not a well-known AVA in California. 39 bucks, 94 points. I thought it was outstanding wine. I do know what's left. And this really shocks me because I've had past vintages of this wine. Now, now I know because we had one Hungarian wine in the bunch. And that's what's left sitting. 
I've had this wine in the past, but I liked it. I, I didn't like it this much. Remember number four, I said, but remember number four when we reveal it, because I think this is a ripe style done really well. The finish is very good. I'm thinking number four might be an American one. Spice, red cherry. Remember it sm said it smelled like my grandmother's basement a little bit. God, I should have known this because for the region, this is from Eger in Hungary, which is famous for bull's blood. You get that basement, that dusty note. This is the Havash et Tamar. This is the Franum 2018. Brought in by my friends at Taste Hungry. 14.5 alcohol, 34 bucks. I gave it 94 plus points. I think the last vintage I had was 2016. I didn't give it that high a score. Man. So funny, in Hungary, Villan, Villani Franc is the most renowned Cabernet Franc in Hungary. However, I think it does well in other regions like Sexard, Eger, Chopron, even Balaton Lake. Hungarian wines, man, are no joke. You really got to get on it. If you've been following my work for a long time, I was trying to write a Hungarian wine book. I haven't launched a Kickstarter, which failed miserably. Give it up for Hungary! which means uh, cheers. That's the power of Cabernet Franc. Find a lot of value, a lot of interesting wines. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you soon.